Hi there. So we took a little bit of break over the holidays on our Python learning, and today we're going to talk a little bit about comparing values. Now we're not going to go into uh, super depth. We're just going to we're just giving you enough so that you can start experimenting around a lot syntactically with the language, trying out different syntax. You should be, if you want to learn a programming language, you need to be writing little programs. Find a program that you want to do, and after we have the lesson tonight, you will be able to write things like a guess the number game, for example. So let's start out by creating um, a new file, and I'm going to do that by just launching idle and select file, new file, and I'm going to save this immediately as Uh, let's go down here to Python. We'll call this Lesson to Comparing Values. Take that capital O out of there. Alright, so let's start with a really simple example. Um, in most languages, you may be familiar with some syntax that looks like this. Something like that, maybe, or depending on how or who taught you programming or what your preference is, it might look like that. So the idea here is that we're testing the these two values, A and B, to see if they're equal. And Python actually uses this same operator, but it does not use this syntax. The way it, uh, well, well, let me pause for just a moment. So basically, an, we're doing an if statement here, and basically the way an if statement works is if some condition is true, then execute the statements inside the curly braces, no matter how many statements there are. So let's get a couple of numbers from the user. So we'll do something like this. And now we'll write an if statement. So we'll test to see if number, oops, let's take the parenthesis out for right now. If number one is greater than number two, colon, and then we indent all the statements that we want to execute. The first number is greater than the second number. Okay, so let's just do that much. Let's run this and let's see what happens here. We'll put a four and a five. Nothing happened because 4 is not greater than 5, but we'll do this again, 5 and 4, and it says the first number is greater than the second number. Now this looks like it's working, but there's a problem. Remember that when we get input from the user, it comes in as a string, and because Python dynamically types variables, we don't have to declare the variable type up front, what that means is number 1 and number 2 in this case are strings. They are not numeric, and I believe we can prove that if we'll just go ahead and run this again. So if we put 45 and 55, let's see. Let's run that again. 45 and 5. So it it seems like it's working, 
but these are not numbers and so you need to convert these to numbers before you use them. If you don't, you're going to get some unexpected results. And the question is, well, why did it work? Well, it worked because what Python's doing if you're comparing strings is it's actually comparing the ASCII value of the characters in the string. And so let's just take a real quick look at this and so the computer stores things as binary and every character in a string has a numeric value for example here's the value in uh, in decimal of 4 it's equivalent to 52 here's the value of 5 it's equivalent to 53 so when the comparison is happening the way we had our code originally written, it's actually comparing 52 to 53. It is not comparing 4 to 5. Um, so, a bit of a detour there, but hopefully that makes sense. If not, you need to learn more about that. Now, we can have an else statement. We can say the second number is less, well, let's just do the same thing again. The first number is less than or equal to, because we don't know, the second number like this. Let's run that. So five and a six. The first number is less than or equal to the second number. So again, if the value of number one is greater than the value of number two, then print, then this statement gets executed. Otherwise, if it's anything else, which means if it's equal or less than, it prints this statement. Well, that's not really very granular for doing a comparison. So what we're going to do is add an else if statement here. And if it's, we'll say else if number one is less than number two, then we're going to print the first number is less than the second number. And then our else statement is only the case where they're equal. Okay. So we can take the or out like this. So let's go ahead and run that. So four, six, five, and six. You run this again. six and five and run it again five and six so you can see that it's working fine let's put in two that are equal six and six so this all works great now we can also compare strings that come in you've already seen that by accident but we can do your name is equal to the input of this prompt and we will say if your name is Bob we might print welcome back Bob And if it isn't Bob, then we want to just say print. I don't know you. Or something like that. Oops, no semicolon. 
let's go ahead and run this. So we'll put our numbers in. We'll say our name is Ted. And it says, I don't know you. So it took this code, path. But if I put Bob in, it takes this code path. All right, now we can do a more compound comparison. We can do something like this. If your name is Ted and number one is a nine, then you won. Else you didn't win. So, uh, I think these are all pretty straightforward, what we're doing up here. And this, this is a little bit more complicated. We're using parentheses to group expressions, and we're, we're anding them together. And here's the way it works. Remember that we're trying to evaluate this entire expression to be true or false. So, and. I'll just type a few things here real quick. A true and a true results in a true. A true and a false will be false. A false and a true will be false. And a false and a false will be false. What that's saying is, if you use and as the operator, then if this is false, or and if this is false or this is false, if, e if anything is false, then the whole entire expression is false. Both of these have to be true in order for this code to execute. Or is a little different. Or looks like this. So a true or a true is false, a true or a false is true, a false or a true is true, a false or a false is false. So with an or, if any of them are true, then the whole expression is true. So a little bit about truth tables. We can have more than two expressions here. We could just keep chaining them together, and you could extrapolate what this should look like. So let's see if our program works. Yes, we'll go ahead and save this, and we'll put in 9, 5, and we'll say Ted. And it says, I don't know you, which is this, but it did say, well, you did put in Ted, and the first number was a 9, and so we'll say you won. Okay, so real simple start starting point for how you do if statements in Python. The the indenting syntax is a little bit hard to get used to sometimes for those who have done programming with curly braces or other techniques, um, but it actually works great. Um, just remember that you can have multiple statements inside of these indent blocks. So you could have as many statements in here as you wanted, except you wouldn't you will need to make sure your indents line up, something like that. And you can play around with this, like maybe do a guess the number game. Could you do that? Could you figure out how to prompt the user for a number and then print out U1 if they guess the number? We kind of did that down here, but try that out. And we could even make it funner by having that number be randomized by the computer so that we didn't know as a programmer what the value was going to be. But in any case, this has um, been a lesson on how to do if statements. 
If you want to know more about input, output, or setup, look at the previous video videos in this channel. There's The next video we'll do will be on loops, and then we'll finally do a video on functions. And then we're going to be ready to dive off into some, some, some machine learning um, examples of Python. Again, the intent here is not to show you every single thing syntactically about Python. Get a, get a Python book, but your best bet is really to write as much code as you can. Think up little programs as stupid as they may be and write them. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you did like it, and please feel free to comment, and thanks for watching.